Hello, and welcome to Trekkie and Beyond, a Star Trek podcast. I'm Monika. And I'm Andrea. And welcome to Trekkie and Beyond, our first character deep dive. And this one is all about Philip or Jojo. If you have seen any or watched or listened to any of our past season recaps, we tend to sometimes have a guest host to come and talk with us about how they felt about a season. So we decided to have one today to talk about Philippa because she has so much more than two people can talk about. So today, our guest host is the author, Rod Van Blake. Say hello. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? My introduction to Star Trek was reruns of the original series. And then later on, I started uh, Next Generation after that. Um, continued to watch some of the series, Deep Space Nine. I watched pretty much all of them um, sporadically. Um, but yeah, that was my introduction was the original series with the OG Kirk and Spock and can't do it, Captain. <laughs> the OG series, yeah. Um, so basically, this episode is just going to be us talking about the things we loved, the things we didn't like, the things that were smart, the things that weren't smart about Philip or Jojo. Now, we all know that there are two Jojos that we've met throughout um, Discovery. We've met, we were first introduced to the Prime Jojo, and she was full on like a Star Trek captain, like we have known and that we have the sort of been... Uh, used to from past shows from other Star Trek captains. And then, by surprise, we meet a Terran Giorgio. But this recap, we're going to talk about both versions of her that we met. Um, from the first scene of her being a humanitarian, all the way into her sacrificing herself as Terran Giorgio. And everything in between. There's so much to talk about. There's so much to recap. And a recap could take an entire episode. So we're just going to go into our initial reactions of Philippa and what did we think about her. So Rod, as our guest, you can go first. Prime Giorgio at the beginning of the series to me was a consummate leader. She was very confident. She was self-assured as a ship captain could be, uh, should be. And she was wise and seemed to be always looking to improve those around her. She really tried to endear herself, we see, to Michael as she's first introduced to the Shenzhou uh, before they get to the Discovery. Um, and that was pretty much almost, not, not a trope, but she was the stereotypical kind of ship's captain. And then we get Prime, jo I mean, uh, Taryn Giorgio, and she was that, but to the extreme. Her confidence was through the roof so much that she just had to be on top of everything and everybody. Uh, she didn't take nothing from nobody. Mm -hmm. Overbearing almost. Um, but you're right. It was kind of something that made you like that version a little more than was comfortable sometimes with how cruel and overly militaristic she could be. I understand. I can relate. It's interesting because when I think back to the first time I saw Prime Giorgio, she was wearing a tan colored like cape and um, a hood. And so I really couldn't see the actress's face. And, and then when she removed the hood and I said, OMG, I think I recognize her from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And it's, I started to make the connection there. And I started to think about how I connected to that movie a long time ago and the action. And so it was so nice to be able to see the action in the second episode of the series in which she was in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Klingons for survival. Now, it's a whole other story how she got into that with, with Michael, but it was the hand-to-hand -hand combat that was like, oh, wow, this is going to be really good. And so it really hooked me into the series. And then later on, when Michael pulled Terry and Giorgio into the Prime Universe, and there was a lot more action again and again and again, and seeing her cunning ways and wanting to like I think it was a hydro bomb on um, the Klingon planet like she had no like guard she was like okay well they're evil we'll just kill them all <laughs> so, like, to see her in action was just a, a, a different side of Star Trek that I found interesting because there are people without those boundaries 
And when you're not held to a prime directive, when you're not held to some of the Federation guidelines, hey, you go rogue. And for her, she's used to that. And so it's just interesting to see that complete opposite spectrum of um, the character. So for my initial reaction, I... I loved her. I love Taryn Georgia the most. I don't know. I I like a bad person at heart. I don't know why people pray for me or not. But I loved Taryn Georgia. Um, Prime Georgia, we only really got to truly know her for two episodes. And in that, I didn't dislike her. She was still very much um, a Star Trek captain. Um, she was all about the rules, about doing what was right, diplomacy. She wasn't she was, let's ask questions first and then shoot later. Um, and then we meet Taryn Giorgio, who's like, I'm the one in charge. I'm the emperor. Let's shoot first. And I'm not going to ask questions later. I'm just going to shoot you. I'm just going to kill you. There's no other ifs, ands, or buts about it. I will say, I did love the actress who played her. So I feel like I immediately loved this character so much because I liked Michelle Yeoh so much. And it's just like, you're use her to her, to her potential and to use her strengths, her fighting scenes, um, her hand-to-hand -hand combat, like you said, it's it was great to see it because we know she can do that in real life. Like, if I get on her bad side, she can beat me up, and I, part of me loves that. Um, with Taryn Giorgio, though, it was seeing someone under Star Trek who did not care about the rules, who was like, all right, well, my ends are going to justify the means, regardless of the fact, if it's the right thing, if it's the wrong thing, um, if you like my answer or not, this is what I'm going to do. But then we also get to see her grow a bit throughout all of her, all of the seasons, all of the episodes that she's on. We get to see her still keep her tearness, but like bring it down from like, from 100 down to like 70. Because she still was very much shoot first, ask questions later. But now she's going to ask the questions. She's not just going to kill you for the sake of killing you. She's going to try and make sure she's killing the correct person and not just, you know, eating Kelpians whenever she feels like it. She's <laughs> not going to do that anymore. But will she still kill you? Probably. But this time it actually might be justified. Um, and we get to see this with... Um, we get to see how she grows and actually starts to care about people in the prime world. A little bit more. So I liked her. I honor her. I miss her. I need her to come back because she was amazing. But only Taryn Giorgio. I'm I'm sorry, Prime Giorgio. Like I, I didn't know you well enough. That's not even a question, really. Because <laughs> uh, Prime Giorgio's gone. Um, Taryn Giorgio was basically taking the gloves off the entire time. That that's like like you said. That's what happens when you just take the gloves off. She doesn't care about rules. She doesn't care about anything but what she wants and what she sees as their directive. And Prime Giorgio seems to be a stickler for the rules as we see, like, to her detriment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty much what leads to her ending is because she was such a stickler for the rules. She wouldn't didn't want to hear anything about anything else. All right. So on that note, we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive or critique into the character. So we have a couple questions that we're going to ask each other um, and just to see what we think about Philippa. And we may have already said it. We may be repeating some stuff, but you guys know you love this podcast and you love listening and watching us. So let's get into it. First question is what did you like or dislike or and dislike about the character's journey? First, my heart broke when Prime Giorgio died in the second episode. I was like, what? <laughs> a captain of Starfleet died? Like, okay, red shirts, maybe. Like, other <laughs> character, no name characters, yes. But where in the world are they going with this? How do they do this? I just got connected with her. She's my Crouchy Tiger Hidden Dragon. Why is this happening? So uh, that was my first heartbreak. And I was like, uh, this is not. This is not, but but she was plastered on all of the posters and all of the promotional material. So I was like, this is weird. Maybe they're gonna like like they're gonna have a prequel to the prequel and they're gonna go back in time and show some sort of journey. I don't know, but I was reaching for something. And then when I saw I saw Terry and Giorgio for the first time in all of the regalia, the crown, the gold from the Terry, I was like, oh, okay, because they had to hop to um the mirror universe um, because of Lorca. And then um, we were introduced to her and I was like, okay, this is great. She's back. She's back. I don't know how long she's going to be back. 
And then when Michael brought her into Prime, I was like, really, Michael? Uh, <laughs> but I'm saying all of this to say, and then I got so vested into Terry and Giorgio. And then they sort of kind of killed her off at the end of the third season. And I left feeling unresolved. <laughs> I feel like my heart was broken again for the second time and not really knowing whether she's dead. She's not really dead, but the crew mourned her with the memorial service and everything. So I disliked the character journey in the standpoint that like I'd gone through a roller coaster ride with her and I felt like her character died twice and um, the second time is was not really well explained. Well, not for me anyway. <laughs> what about you, Rod? Uh, I like the character's poise and I like her determination. And of course, uh, my introduction to Michelle Yeoh was probably uh, old martial arts film, uh, Super Cop starring her and Jackie Chan. So I knew when they casted her and it's like, oh, she's going to be whooping butt the whole time. This is going to be really cool. Um, I was surprised as well when the character was off. And that's probably what I disliked. Because, um, I, again, I felt like we were being robbed uh, instantly. And then it was a good switch up when they brought her back. Um, and and the, the journey was kind of predictable to me. You could see that bringing the harder Taryn Giorgio, eventually, I think the Prime Universe was going to rub off on her. And she was trying to hold on to the very end, you know, being as, as prickly as she could be. Um, with everybody else, not wanting to befriend anybody, not letting anybody really care for her. But it was kind of predictable in that eventually she's going to soften and she held on to the very end. Uh, I don't I don't think she's gone, or, or at least the version of her isn't gone. I think we'll, we'll, we'll get her back. So what I liked about her was her differentness <laughs> of everyone else in that universe. And I'm talking about Taryn Giorgio. I liked that she pushed the envelope that she gave them radical suggestions um and granted they didn't listen to those suggestions um there's uh, uh i just had it there was a scene where she where they were like discussing a, a different option and she was like we could just kill them all something like that and everyone just looked at her and she was like it was just a suggestion i like that she forced star trek starfleet to think outside the box not necessarily go all the way to, to, towards her end, but to sometimes you can't win with diplomacy. Sometimes action is needed. Um, and it sort of goes back to the first episode, the first two episodes of Discovery from season one of that Giorgio was all about diplomacy, diplomacy, this diplomacy. And Michael was like, you know, action. We need to do action first. Diplomacy isn't going to work here. And this Giorgio sort of was like, diplomacy isn't going to work. You win by fighting. You win by stopping the people trying to kill you. You want to get rid of the Klingons? Kill the Klingons. They're not going to stop otherwise. And it's like, okay, let's not take it to that extreme, but let's also understand you can't always reason with people. And I liked that about her journey of, why am I trying to reason with you? You, We're not going to agree. I don't need you to agree with me. You're Either I'm going to live or you're going to live. So let's figure out who that's going to be. <laughs> there was no, she was very much not about the bureaucracy, like the red tape. She was not about um, finding a solution that worked for everyone. She was like, let's, no, they're wrong. I'm right. Get rid of it. And regardless of the fact if she was right or wrong in this instance, regardless of the fact of what, of, of if her um, idea of her discussion of whatever she was saying was illegal or was wrong or was, you know, total and w was a war crime, she very much stood in who she was of, I'm walking out of here or you're walking out of here. Let's figure out who, which one that's going to be. <laughs> and there um, are also similarities between Prime and Terry and Giorgio. I think both of them had natural maternal instincts. One just showed them a lot more. Like Prime Giorgio was definitely mentoring Michael and um, helping guide her to leadership through to Starfleet because the when Michael first joined um, the ship, she was very focused in on like the Vulcan ways, and I and it seems as though Prime Giorgio helped to really take up where Sarek had left off, and 
in the end, Terry and Georgia was also mentoring Michael along the way. And and Saru, um, Tilly, Captain Killy, and so forth. <laughs> um, to the point in which Terry and Georgia was so maternal, she decided that Kelpian shouldn't be slaved anymore. Like she decided Saru should be able to be free and not. So it was just, it was, there were similarities between the two, but they were also very different. <laughs> <laughs> um, for their similarities, I I only really saw, for me, I only really saw one similarity, and that was their blind spot with Michael. Um, they, both of them cared about Michael, and we find out that Taryn Jojo literally raised Michael. And so um, they both had this, I'm not going to try and punish you as much, Michael, even though, like, you could be wrong. In prime, uh, prime Taryn's eyes, sorry, in prime Giorgio's eyes, or in Taryn's eyes, Michael, you betrayed me, but I still love you. Um, and it's really interesting, their whole dy dynamic. But um, I have to say, it wasn't necessarily their similarities for me that all that stood out or the differences. It was the fact that I feel like if, it was the fact that Taryn Giorgio came down to a medium, like Rod said, and then I feel like reverse though, if like prime Giorgio was in the Taryn world, she would have met that Taryn Giorgio like halfway. It was like they, where Taryn Giorgio ended, in my opinion, was like, oh, you know what? If Prime Giorgio ended up in the Taryn universe, she would have probably gone halfway there, like not full Taryn, just like how Taryn didn't go full Prime. So I like how near the end, we were getting a little bit of both Giorgios, it seemed. We were getting a more Starfleet Giorgio from Taryn Giorgio, um, at the end, but she was still like we can still see she was still 100% Taryn Giorgio, but it was like okay, we get to see her without any shackles <laughs> of rules. <laughs> yeah, they, they, were, they were both um, very intelligent and calculating. I think the biggest similarity to me was the depth of their heartbreak when Michael didn't do things their way. Like both of them were grooming. Prime Jojo was was grooming Michael to become a leader and thought that she should be seeking a captain's chair. Taryn Jojo was basically trying to groom Taryn Michael into becoming the next empress, even though I don't know if that was the case, but she was making it seem that way. And when either of those Michaels didn't do things the way the Georgios wanted them to do, like they were taken aback and like, truly betrayed and heartbroken that you're not doing things in the way that I set forth for you to do them. Like, it's like the ultimate betrayal. Like, you're not doing what I told you to do in a way specifically that I told you to do it, and now I, I don't understand. Uh, when uh, Michael tries the, the Vulcan nerve pinch on Prime Giorgio, and she realizes what she's done, and you can see her sitting in the captain's chair, like, mulling that over, like, you really tried to do this like in not the way that I'm telling you to do it the same thing when uh Taryn Giorgio sees you know finds out what Michael has done behind her back the whole time she's like oh no you went the wrong way basically and she's like crushed by it that is very true did you guys think if she had any trademarks um or signature moves or a unique style it, probably the style, obviously, with uh, Taryn Jojo, especially when, like uh, one of you had mentioned earlier, when she had the whole regalia going on, the gold, the drip was strong with uh, Taryn Jojo. Mm -hmm. She had the the inlay gold outfit, the sword on the hip. Like, we're in space thousands of years or however much in the future, and my girl is still rocking a full-on sword. Like, who's 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 rocking a sword? when we have energy weapons and phasers and things of that nature. That that was a thick with her unit. I really love her hair, dudes. Like her, she was sometimes sporting a ponytail. Sometimes there was a very dramatic tapered bob. So it was short in the back to also show, showcase all of her, in, the intricate work in her capes and her other gowns. And then also I really like the heels. She always had heels on compared to the rest of the crew wears, wears boots. Uh, so <laughs> it was her style. She was always, to me, looking sexy, looking hot, 
looking great um and never really had flyaway hair she was always poised stylish very confident in everything that she was doing and and, and encouraged the rest of the crew to be confident um so for me her signature style was just her confidence and her swag um, for me, it was her fighting style. It was her, um, cause she, you're both right. She did have a sleekness, a drip to her that was just uniquely her, um, that no one else could sort of like touch. She had this air of, I know I'm a badass, so I'm just going to live in it and accept it. But for, but really what I loved was her fighting style, like how she was, maybe it was like her trademark, but like no matter what battle they were in. Um, in the third season of Discovery, when they're in the saloon and they're like, we need backup and it's her. Like, she's their backup. <laughs> and she comes in and is like, all right, I'm gonna take out this entire room. It was this air of, I'm a badass. I know I am. Everyone else is going to understand it. Rather, whether they accept it or not, I'm taking you all down. And um, it just... Even even with Discovery crew not even fully trusting her to, like, not kill them, they always knew, it was like, look, if it's either the crew or someone else, she's going to save us. So at least we know that. Like, she's not going to kill us if there's someone else there. I just loved her, like, badass trademark fighting style. To me, she always had an aura that I have nothing to lose. I got nothing yes. to lose. I'm not even in. I'm not even supposed to be here. I, I'm not part of Starfleet, so... <laughs> <laughs> there are no rules for me. <laughs> Rod, did you have something to say? Yeah, she just she she was on her own. She was on her own vibe the whole time. And we were talking about the drip. I think uh the Terran world seems like everybody had to have their drip on par. And if it wasn't, I felt like the rest of the crew would like talk about you. Whereas Prime Star Fleet, everybody has basically the same uniform. They're very rigid in their protocols and everything. It just it wasn't the same. Like you had to come, you had to come with it if you were in the Terran world. Like everybody had, they 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 glowed up everybody on, you know, in that whole mirror universe. Tilly was glowed up. Everybody had, you know, everybody had to get their shine on. Oh, I miss Kelly, Captain Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of like the Terran oh, world, there, the Terran universe. One of my I don't know, memorable moments that's really hard for me to get out of my head is when uh, Terry and Giorgio and Prime Michael sat down for dinner in Giorgio's quarters and Terry and Giorgio like slipped a line just really casual mentioning that they were eating Kelpian and it was like so casual but I was like, what? I had to like go back and rewind. Like, did she just say that she was feeding her kelpie, the kelpie, and basically that Michael had picked out? But it was all of those little subtle lines from Terry and Giorgio that made you kind of like, like, just think about how rigid and cold that whole universe is. <laughs> like, because it was. With that universe and the, with the world that she fostered in that universe, it was like you, like going back to what both of you guys said, you could not look out of place. You had to look to like this. There was no, okay, bad hair day. Oh, you're having a bad hair day? I'm going to just kill you because that means there's something off about you. Like there was no, I need five minutes just to pull myself together. In those five minutes, you will be dead. Like, <laughs> like you did not have a chance to not look to the nines, to the tens, to be uh, blinged out. Um, and then you had to be ready for those little quips, like of Giorgio's, just, oh, you know, the kelp, they, these are the most tender pieces. And like, if you showed reaction, showed any type of weakness, you were done for. You were Splitsville. Like your head is no longer connected to your body. Like, and then also it's like, how do you ever have friends in that universe? But that's a whole other side conversation <laughs> <laughs> that we can get into later because if everyone try and take your spot, no one really wants you alive. I have to say one of my favorite moments with her um, has to be, I have to go back to the scene of her being in the saloon in that little futuristic saloon because it just showcased how you had two other Starfleet people in that room. You had a whole you had a whole ship of people you could have called. You could have called for backup. You could have called, like, uh, there's 
other red shirts, the unnamed red shirts who are probably going to die in that episode. Like there were so many people you could have called and yet it was just one person. And that's my favorite moment with, uh, even probably my favorite scene with uh, Taryn Giorgio because it just showcased, going back to my earlier point from part one of this episode, just how much of a badass she was. It just showed that she could do it all by herself. Like she was really only there for truly you because she could take care of herself. She could have, if they had left her in that time by herself, if they were like, you know what? We don't want to deal with you anymore. Go off on your own. She would have ruled the Emerald Chain by the end of the year. Like that is the, that is the air that she exuded. That is the personality that she had. That was the, I don't, I can do battle by myself. I, you all have a phaser, but I have a sword and guess who's going to win? Like, and she wasn't running the Mary Sue way. As well, like a character who had no flaws, who had no, who was like the perfect character. She did have flaws. She did have weaknesses and she always overcame them. She always fought back against them. Even when she was like dying in, in sickness, she was like, well, I guess I'm going to die. <laughs> and she's like, and if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down like a G. Like there is no way you're, I'm going to go down in the sick bed. Like that's just not happening to me. I'm, that's not how my death is going to happen. So yeah, that was my favorite moment because it was in that scene where I was just like, this girl could rule this entire time time by herself give her time she's in charge of the emerald chain <laughs> yeah i think i think the fighting prowess is a foregone conclusion with her uh, because of her background so my my favorite scenes of her are probably more subtle than what most would assume uh it's mainly the debriefing scenes when she's the only one that figures out um with the new starfleet when they've left into the future that they're all being debriefed and interrogated by an ai and she's just playing the entire time. She's doing stuff to make it glitch. And the, the one guy, I thought he was the AI too, the guy with the glasses is getting frustrated. He's, saying, he's like, stop it, stop it. And she's like, I know you can't handle this. I just got to do this a certain amount of times. It's going to make your program glitch. I don't have to give you any information. Uh, matter of fact, you know I'm Taryn. Uh, do you think I would actually tell you the truth either way? So this is pointless to interrogate me anyway. So she's just playing with them the entire time. And at the end of it, like you said, they just let her go on away. Like they, there's nothing they can do to her. Like just going about your business. Um, and the fact that she goes to black ops, and I wish they'd have fleshed that out more and not done away with them because I think that's the real nightmare. Like, what is Taryn Giorgio like with the run of black ops with a Starfleet ship that can cloak itself and all the technology that they've amassed? over time i think that would have been the scariest thing ever like just let her run with that and just have her pop up when they wanted to because i think i don't think george is gone i think because of the idea of mirror universes and therefore possibly multiverses mm -hmm. um i think they, they're going to say that in the back pocket for later when they need it we'll see i do hope she is not gone i um, because I do know they sent her back to the her mirror universe, but like in the past in her mirror universe before like she would ever have come to the prime world. Yeah. But I, I want I, I specifically want to see that Taryn Giorgio again, just because we're we've been growing with her and we have been um experiencing her. Oh no, Giorgio, don't do that. Oh yes, Giorgio, do that. Like. <laughs> We have been even the highs and lows with her. And granted, meeting another one would be fun, but I'm not done with this one yet. I There's still some more to her story. Like, because now that she is that Taryn Giorgio who has been exposed to the prime world, who has changed her way of thinking, um, not necessarily fully prime, because she'll never be fully prime, um, what that Mary, what that Taryn Mary universe looks like, could possibly look like now if she was able to implement changes over time. Um, would she have ever been portrayed by that Michael if she raised her differently? Would she have just straight up, you know what, Lorca? You're dead. Let's, like, cut this coup off, like, right now. You were never in my universe. Like, what would she have done? Like, I would love... I know there was, like, talks of, like, a Section 30, Section 31 spinoff, yeah. but I would love just to see her in the Terran universe. And I know it's not technically, like, Star Trek, but... Because it would be Emperor just killing people, but... <laughs> I would love a spinoff of that world with her change to see how that happens. Yeah, I think it 
if written the right way, it could be star in the Star Trek realm because it could show hope for the future. That's the real thing about Star Trek, right? And so um, because she's learned so much being in the Prime universe that she's learned that, oh, the Kelpians shouldn't be enslaved mm -hmm. and that um, we should learn more about these other cultures before trying to just kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and other things like that um i am um, like you guys um really like her i would love to see her more in like a section 31 spinoff once again she's mentioned a lot of little things subtly along the way and in her final episode she mentioned a son named san and i would love to learn more about that and like why she did not end up raising that son. It seems like they're dropping more in for like potential. I just know the actress is really busy right now, but when the timing's right and they're able to make that spin up, I'm all on board with that. Because also like she subtly men mentioned that she was in a polygamous relationship with Hugh and um, Paul. Like she just like subtly mentions things <laughs> that, um, that, she was involved in it's just amazing to me this character she side note though she did describe children as ungrateful and convenient parasites so oh absolutely <laughs> absolutely but that was before she had her real i think awakening with um the guardian of forever i think she may fall further to the dark side if we continue that taryn story because we see prime georgia saying Basically, the reason that Sarah chose me is because I've seen so much death and loss of life and still I choose hope. What if she has this change of heart in the Terran universe and goes with this new attitude or, or newish attitude and loses someone else? Uh, she's already lost um, Terran Michael. Now she has to abandon Prime Michael. And then she endears herself to someone else trying to make a change in the universe there. But the Terran... You know, Taryn's going Taryn and keep going the way because that's all they've ever known. And she loses someone else and falls even further and just becomes even more just extreme. I just like the fact that her fate is not set like Pike. <laughs> I'm still I, I'm, I'm still not accepting that that fate. So no, <laughs> not with this one. He's too cute. So. <laughs> She, oh, she can't Rob. save off radiation burns, though. <laughs> I mean, we're just not going to accept that yet. So, <laughs> until it happens, I'm going to not say that's happening. Um, so, any other predictions about what's next for the character? Anything else you guys might want to see with her, or if like, or if Rob's idea comes comes to fruition of another universe, uh, Michael? Anything you guys like to see in a different one? Or if there's one that was like sort of a, a oh, if you meet like one who was never joined Starfleet and is like, I'm just a rogue, like bounty hunter. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. If she was like a. She'd really be off the chain with no, absolutely no tether, no, no code of any kind from either universe, just running amok. That, yeah, that'd be crazy. Anything to add? No, that sounds great. That sounds like the, um, Next Harry Mutt. <laughs> <laughs> but this one we want to survive and not just be like, did you really just get off with no repercussions? Die, please. I need you to die. I'm done with you. <laughs> so any final thoughts before we come to the end of this amazing character deep dive? Rod? No, that's it. I mean, we, we've covered pretty much all of it. I like, you know, hopefully we get to see more of the character uh, in whatever form they give us. Uh, we need some more fight scenes from her because yeah. that, that's what she does. That's her thing. And maybe we get some, maybe they switch the drip up and we get something we, you know, be surprised to see uh, after all. Monica? I think that Michelle Yao basically required all the other actors and actresses in this show to step up their game both in hand-to-hand -hand combat and acting because she's for me was the most well like had the biggest name mm -hmm. and the most acting experience of everyone so if you're in a fight scene with her you have to step up 
if you're in an acting scene with her, you have to step up. You have to step up your style. You have to. Like, <laughs> yes, <it's great. laughs> otherwise, it's you're going to be shamed. <laughs> so I, I think her, her, um, just all of her years of experience acting and being in this industry really showed in her and how she owned that character and required everyone else to step up in, in a wonderful way. I really missed her. I could, I felt the loss in the last season and season four without her. Did that season, did that season exist if she's not there? Did that no. really happen? <laughs> but no, I definitely agree with you. Um, she just has this air of grace. Very thankful to to Michelle's mom for being a busybody, for forcing her to do Miss Taiwan. I think it was. Oh, no, no. Ah. Malaysia. Miss Malaysia. Thank you. I was like, no, that was the wrong country. Um, <laughs> uh, like they're like Miss America, but in Malaysia. Her mom, that's how she got into it because her mom signed her up, signed her up for it without her permission and she won. And then, that, so I have to thank her mom. <laughs> For being a busybody and be like, you know what? My daughter's pretty. She's going to do this. She's smart. She's going to win this competition. And like force, like getting her into our world, into our space, because she has this grace about her that is just amazing. She exudes it in every single character she brings to life. Um, in every episode, she just had this air of, I'm here. Meet me where I'm at because I'm not lowering myself to you. Um, she's just amazing. And I know that she's super busy and doing amazing movies and winning all the awards and everything, but I need you back to Star Trek. <laughs> I need you back. <laughs> I miss you. Like there was not, it, we only had you for two episodes and then we didn't have you. And then we had you again. And I will promise you every episode we have you is better for it. Yeah. Please come back. You are my favorite. I'm missing you. Please, Michelle, if you ever hear this, come back. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for watching slash listening to this episode of the Character Deep Dive of Philip or Joe Giorgio. I hope you guys enjoy, enjoyed it. And as always, I'm Andrea. I'm Anika. And I'm Ron. <laughs> and live long, and, long and, and prosper. prosper.